welcome dear students myself geeta kadam and today we are going to learn about chapter number 6 in our history and the name of the chapter is beginning of freedom movement part 1 let us start students in the previous chapter we saw that due to the britishers english education started in our india and after some time english education made mixed effects on the indian society english educated indians were instrumental in bringing about renaissance bringing about change they launched reform movements in social political religious economic and cultural fields this renaissance sowed the seeds of nationalism in india students nationalism means it's a feeling that we all are together under one nation we all are united under one roof so that nationalism feeling created by the newly educated indians the various movements in different parts of the country created the need of a political organization at all india level having a common goal and on this background indian national congress this organization formed and they worked for the freedom struggle of our india so students in this part we are going to learn about the following points first one is background of the formation of indian national congress second point establishment of indian national congress third point moderate phrase and fourth point extremist phrase so let us start with the point background of the formation of indian national congress let us see the background for formation of indian national congress first reason is centralization of administration see students due to the british administration its implementation on india brown nation under one roof in its true sense due to the identical reforms means equal policies all over the country and equality before the law because of these the feelings of nationalism develop among the indians and for the convenience of administration and swift movement of the army britishers also develop the transportation okay means british build the network of roads and railways but these facilities benefited the indians as well the people from different parts of india came in contact of each other and there was increase in communication and the feeling of nationalism grew up means the centralization of administration it help us for increase the feeling of nationalism now students the next reason for the formation of indian national congress was economic exploitation as we new students the indian wealth was flowing towards england by all means due to the imperialist policy of england there was a beginning of economic exploitation of india how see the farmers were compelled compelments pressurized to take the cash crops beside that the burden of land taxes on farmer continuous famines all these broke down the backbones of indian agriculture traditional industries were declined which led to rise 
in unemployment then the capitalist exploited the worker class like this the various new taxes were also imposed on the middle class so this led to the growth of discontent among the people so students like that the economic exploitation also help us to increase the feeling of nationalism and discontent against the britishers now students the next reason for the formation of indian national congress was western education due to the spread of western education students in the previous chapters we saw that the new idea like justice liberty equality democracy etc were introduced to the indians and the principles like rationalism scientific attitude humanity nationalisms these principles were accepted by the indians due the western or foreign education and these principles because of this values okay which inculcated a feeling that we are capable of carrying out the work of our country and its progress is also possible by following these principles students india is a country of diverse languages but with the introduction of english language india got a new medium of communication english language prove to be a binding factor for the whole country now students the next point or the next reason for the formation of indian national congress was study of ancient indian history as we knew students the asiatic society was established at bengal by the british and many indians and western scholars they started study of our indian culture than the manuscripts means handwritten literature in the sanskrit and persian and other languages were examined and researched was published then dr bhauda ji lard dr r g bhandarkar these indian scholars they made intensive study of our ancient indian culture intensive means detailed study and after understanding that we are blessed with glorious ancient tradition and indians were awakened with a sense of our own identity the bandarkar oriental research institute is also working since last 100 years in pune besides that students the contribution of newspapers were also important during this period english and vernacular newspapers and periodicals came to be published through these newspapers political and social awakening took place then the newspapers like darpan amrit bazar patrika hindu prabhakar kesri maratha they started criticizing the government so students all these reasons they led down the growth of discontent among the indian peoples against the britishers so students as we saw that the english educated indians were instrumental to bring about renaissance they launched reform movements in different field and now it was necessary to bring together the groups and the peoples who had politically awareness it was necessary to draw attention the people towards the question of the nation this led to the emergence of a political organization on all india level and from that the indian national congress all india level this organization was formed so let us see about 
Indian National Congress. Establishment of Indian National Congress On 28th December 1885, the first session of Indian National Congress was held at Gokuldas Tejpal Sanskrit School in Mumbai. And during the time, there were 72 delegates, delegates means representatives from different provinces of India who participated in the session. Bomesh Chandra Banerjee, a renowned lawyer, means very famous lawyer from Kolkata, he was the president of this session. And in the session, they established the Indian National Congress. Alan Hume, a British officer, he also took lead in the establishment of Indian National Congress. See students, during the time when Indian National Congress was formed, Increased proportion of Indians in the administration and reduction of military expenses by the British government. Such statements were sent to the British. Now, let us see about the objectives of Indian National Congress. First one is to make the people from different parts of our India Forget the differences in religion, race, caste, language, geographical territories and bring them on a common platform. Second objective is to understand each other problems and views. Third one is to increase the feeling of oneness or unity among the people. And fourth one is to take efforts for the development of the country. So these were the objectives when Indian National Congress formed. After the establishment of Indian National Congress, the first few years, that period were known as a moderate period or moderate phrase. And later, the period were known as extremist phrase or extremist period. So, let us see about moderate phrase and extremist phrase. Moderate phrase. The early 10 years after the establishment of Indian National Congress means the period between 1885 to 1905. It's known as a period of moderate or we call it moderate phase. During this time, the contribution of moderates was very slow but consistent. The leaders of Indian National Congress were realistic and highly educated. They were aware that through organized work, a strong foundation needs to be built up. Western thinkers philosophy of liberalism, freedom, equality, fraternity, these values had an impact on them. They believe in constitutional methods. Students, constitutional methods means legal method, means fight or present our demand peacefully in front of the government. So, the moderate had a hope that if we demand through constitutional thoughts, then, then only the British will give justice to our demands. The leaders like Gopal Krishna Gokhale, Firoz Shah Mehta, Surendranath Banerjee, they all were the moderate leaders. In the session of Indian National Congress, different resolutions were put forward by them, such as for example, to get representation in provincial legislature, jobs for educated Indians, cutting down the increasing expenses on military, then legislature and judiciary should be separated for safeguarding the legal rights of Indians, etc. These all about the moderate free phase. Now let us see about the extremist phase. 
The period of 1905 to 1920 is known as the period of extremist or we call it extremist phase. What is mean by extremist? The leaders of Indian National Congress who believed in severe struggle. Severe means a strong or strict struggle to attain the freedom were known as extremist. Moderate and extremist were unanimous means together they think about and they work for the objectives of Indian National Congress. But they had differences regarding the methods to achieve it. They advocated intensification of the struggle since the British did not respond to the petition and appeals. Lokmanya Tilak, Bipin Chandra Pal, Lala Lajpat Rai were leaders of the extremist group of Indian National Congress. According to these leaders, if lakhs of people participated in the freedom movement and challenged the British, movement it will be successful they did not adopt the means of arms revolution but insisted on extensive agitations now let us see about the methods or the mediums adopted by the extremist initially the leaders used the mediums of newspapers National festivals, national education to bring about the political awakening. Let us see about each one of them in short. Firstly, newspapers. Lokmanya Tilak started the newspapers Keshri and Maratha and criticized the suppressive policies of the British threat. Then, Amrit Bazar Patrika was a mouthpiece of extremist ideology in Bengal. Now the next one is national festivals. Lokmanya Tilak organized public celebrations of Ganesh Utsav and Shiv Jayanti to bring together the people, exchange their ideas, promote harmony and bring about national awakening. He believed that the government will ban gathering of people for political reasons but not for religious reasons. Now the next one is national education. The leaders formed educational institutions to sow the seeds of patriotism. It would create a generation which will be concerned about the language and tradition. So students, all Indian leaders who were politically aware, they kept aside their differences of caste, religion, language, provinces, and gathered on a single platform of Indian National Congress. The moderate led the foundation of freedom movement, but the extremist carried forward the movement. So like that way, the moderate and extremist, they both work for freedom movement under the tag or under the organization which is known as Indian National Congress. Rest of the part in this lesson we will be seen in the next video. Thank you. Now students come to the exercise of above part. What we saw. First question is write the names. First moderate leaders. Which were the moderate leaders? We saw that. Yes. Gopal Krishna Gokhale, Surendranath Banerjee and Firoz Shah Mehta. The second one is extremist leader. Who are the extremist leader we saw? Yes. Lala Lajpat Rai, Bal Gangadhar Tila and Bipin Chandra Pal. Now the next one is write short notes. Objectives of Indian National Congress. So this question includes the following points for answer. First one is the Indian National Congress was established in 1885 with the following objectives. First point is to bring about the people of India on a common platform. Second point is to create a feeling of unity among them. Third point is to provide opportunities to understand one another's problem and views. Fourth point is 
to increase the feeling of unity among the people and last point is to take measure for the upliftment of the country